a gospel reading, um, as it was the fifth Sunday. And so this gospel reading, when we talk about the five loaves and the two fish, we talk about blessings. But today we're going to focus on um, kind of a different uh, look at it. There's a beautiful contemplation that I came across and I wanted to share with you. There was a, a, a writer who said that this is a recreation of Exodus. And so um, we notice that these people in this miracle didn't reap or didn't sow. And our Lord Jesus Christ multiplies the bread as, and he multiplies the meat, and the fish in this case, the quail in the other case, so that um, those who came after him and really sought after him would have every physical need taken care of. <clears throat> And 35,000 years ago, out in the wilderness, God fed the people bread from heaven, called the manna, and with quail. And just as God called his people out of Egypt to the wilderness, to the Mount Sinai, now our Lord calls his people out of the city into the wilderness uh, to a mountain. So they followed him. They heard his word. They heard his teachings. And just as the Israelites had heard the word uh, from God, on Mount Sinai and received the law. So now the people come out of the city into the wilderness to the mountain to receive the teachings of Christ himself in the flesh. And we see they left everything behind. They have entered um, the peace of the wilderness and they heard the voice of God and they sought the kingdom of God first. And God still knowing the physical needs of man takes care of these needs. He breaks the bread, and what began as only five loaves, he fills every single belly over 5,000 people. And there were even 12 baskets full of fragments, leftovers. Even more than they started with. And also the same with the fish, divided among everybody. There is even more left over than what they started with. So, in the discussion that led before this, the disciples said, we need to send the people away. They have to fend for themselves. So what, was, what the disciples were asking was a very reasonable human request. It was logical, right? It makes sense. On its face, it makes sense and it's quite logical. The people are hungry. They almost have no food out here. And they have to go away. They have to figure this out. But what's the problem with their thinking? The problem is, for one thing, it eliminates God from the equation. According to human wisdom, it's a good idea, right? But according to the wisdom of God, it's completely unnecessary. In fact, if we really understand the identity of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's almost wrong. But the disciples didn't fully understand yet. They understood that Christ was special. They thought that he might be the Messiah, the Anointed One. But they didn't really fully understand, did they? And... What is it that they didn't understand? This is important. They failed to recognize that our Lord Jesus Christ was not only the Son of God, but he was equal to the Father, and he is the creator of the whole universe. When we have a problem in our lives, it's important that we put it within proper context. <clears throat> it's important that the context includes God, and that God is part of the context. When he is part of the context, we understand that the whole situation has potential to be completely transformed. The disciples were looking for an earthly solution. A lot of times we fall into that same temptation. I, I myself fall into that same temptation. We look for the earthly solution because they, they did not see the heavenly standing right in front of them. They contemplated what was humanly possible because they could not fathom that the one in their midst can do the impossible. Each one of us has situations in our lives that are like this. We find ourselves hungry. We find ourselves tired. We find ourselves lacking the things that we think are necessary for life. But God reminds us, our Lord reminds us, that when he is present, hunger and want are gone. And... You know, this is not only strictly physical matter of hunger that we're talking about, but more importantly, the spiritual matter. <clears throat> when we feel that we have a lack of peace, when we feel a lack of fulfillment, we may be tempted to seek out distractions, 
to seek out something to numb the pain. Or we may even seek out to follow false gods. We can define those as we want. And they would tempt us to offer peace. It's very attractive. They may offer us happiness in a shell or contentment. But through all of this, we should remember that our human problems require more than human solutions. They require divine intervention. See, these miracles, when we come across them in the Gospels, they're performed by our Lord to encourage us. They set us an appropriate awe of who he is. But in some cases, we're left with a question mark, right? Yes, he's God. Yes, he can do this. Yes, he did do this. But will he take care of me like he took care of them? I wonder. If I'm hungry, will he feed me? If I'm in need, will he meet my needs? Or was this just some big show that happened so long ago that was put in the Gospels for whatever reason? Was this just an impressive miracle so that I can end up in the Gospels? Our Lord makes a promise to all of us in his Sermon on the Mount. He says, Oh, you of little faith, God feeds the bird of the air, and they don't sow, and they don't reap. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them, and you are more valuable than the sparrows. Look at the flowers in the field. Even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. How much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all these things, food, water, shelter, clothing, all these things will be added to you. It's an amazing promise. He promised this to us, each and every single one of us. But sometimes we don't pay attention to the promises. Our Lord does not promise that if you seek after a paycheck, if you seek after food and water and clothing and shelter and paying the mortgage and advancing in your career, he does not say that if you seek after all those things, those necessities of life, and then try to shove a little prayer here and there, a little worship if we have time, our Lord doesn't promise that if you do that, then your needs will be met. He doesn't say that. The people in the world then and the people in the world now do starve. There are people that go thirsty. There are people that are sick. There are people that are homeless. Our Lord does not promise that if you seek after the things of the world with your whole heart and then throw a few crumbs to Christ and show up for a little bit of time on a Sunday and pray now and then, that then he promises that all your needs will be met. He doesn't say that. Our Lord promises that if you put the kingdom of Christ first, then God will add all these other things that we might need. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added into you. God did not send down the manna in Egypt. He sent it down in the wilderness. That means if you want manna, you first have to get out of Egypt. No offense to Egypt. I'm not trying to make a point here. Are we willing to get out of Egypt? After all, you know, they have the best restaurants, they have the best music, the best food, the best entertainment. You know, Egypt is kind of nice. It's a, it's a Hollywood. It's Chicago. It's Los Angeles. It's Orange County. But before you get, can get to the mountain in the wilderness, you have, to, you have to get out of Egypt. Our Lord did not multiply the loaves and the fish in Jerusalem or Capernaum. He went into the wilderness and the only people who got to see and participate in that miracle were those who left. Those who went out of the city. Those who went to the wilderness. Those who were faithful and were willing to hear the word of God. If we expect Christ to meet our needs in some sort of miracle, then we have to get out of Egypt. We need to dedicate ourselves to learning the things of God. We have to learn how to put things in perspective. There are many other hungry and homeless people on earth that day, if you really think about that. And the only ones that were fed with an abundance were those who were with Christ. 
You see, it's not enough just to leave Egypt. We have to take it a step further. It's not enough just to go to the wilderness. You know, you left Egypt and you went to the wilderness and you pitched your own tent and you, and you camped out and you're on your own. No, you need to find the mountain that he's on. You need to be with him. You need to be seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Our Lord didn't just call down bread from heaven. He could have. He absolutely could have done that. He could have taken one of the loaves and one of the fish and multiplied it to everybody. He had the ability. He didn't say, you know what? You keep four and I'll just take one of them. I only need one of them. No. He required all of it. It doesn't matter whether you come to him with five loaves and a few fish. It doesn't matter if you come to him with seven loaves and a few fish. He's going to ask for all of it. He's going to ask for all of it. It's not the number five or the number seven that's so significant. In both cases, it was the willingness to give up everything. To give up everything. He could take one loaf and multiply it. But he's not going to do that. He could take a halfway commitment from each one of us and he could do something amazing. But you know what? I don't think he's going to do that. Whatever you, whatever you have, however little, however insignificant to the multitudes, don't hold back. Don't hold anything back to Christ, but give it all over to him. Don't trust in your own riches. For only when we give 100%, does he take it? Does he break it? Does he multiply it and he brings blessings to those around us? It's also important to notice that in this case, when he performed this miracle and met their needs, we notice that there were actually needs. They were actually needs. See, in other places, there's another place in the gospel that we read that when the apostles were walking with him, they were talking and learning from him, they were hungry. But he didn't perform a miracle. He, when they were hungry, and so they went to the, to the fields and started picking the grains of wheat. We know this story. This is from Matthew chapter 12 and Mark chapter 2. The people out here in the wilderness are not people who had a restaurant nearby so they can be fed. They didn't have the refrigerators full or the pantries full. They were not near fields at harvest time and they can go glean uh, the grain for themselves. They couldn't do that. They were truly in a state of need. In all too many cases, I think, and I'm speaking for myself, we ask God to, to supply a miracle for our needs, when in truth, it's just we're asking God to enable us. I mean, I'm speaking for myself, to enable my laziness. We're hungry, but not because there's no food, but because we don't want to go through the effort of harvesting. And we have nothing to harvest because we didn't want to go to the effort of planting. And there's, we didn't plant because we didn't want to go through the effort of plowing and tilling the field. We don't want to examine ourselves. When the food was right there, right at their hands, our Lord did not call down the bread from heaven. He said to the apostles, pick some of the grain for yourselves. When you are truly seeking first the kingdom of heaven, and because of his command, not because of my laziness, not because of our foolishness, when you're really out there in the wilderness, having heard his word, you look around and there's nothing for you to eat. There's no food for you to harvest. You're going hungry. When you're truly following him and you truly find yourself in need, he will completely meet your needs and more. This is a story of a replay of Exodus. And if we're going to seek the blessings of God, we too need to be willing to leave the city and turn our backs to Egypt. We have to turn our backs to false teachers. We have to turn our backs to the comforts and conveniences that we so desperately depend on. We need to be willing to follow Christ in the wilderness and be willing to seek first the kingdom of, of heaven and his righteousness. We need to be with him wherever he is. We need to go to him. We need to be diligently, consistently, daily learning from his word. 
then we need to be willing to work to meet our own needs in whatever ways that he provides for us and not be, not be loose with what the blessings are that he gives us. When we are going through all of that, and if we still find ourselves in actual need, we trust that he will meet our needs. And even then, in that case, we need to expect that he's going to ask us to give him all that we have so that he can bless it and multiply it. Just like with the loaves and the fish, the leftovers after the blessings, the leftovers are after that meal will be even more than what you gave him in the first place. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Blessed are they, angels.